Hi, this video takes a look at the rules of exponents. So we're going to take a look at each rule individually uh, and discuss um, not only how it works, but why it works and try to make some sense around it as well. And then we've got six examples, uh, sample problems to put those rules of exponents um, to work. Let's take a look. Okay, let's take a look at rules of exponents. So our first rule of exponent is when we multiply um, two variables that have exponents, we're going to add the exponents. So something like this, x to the third plus x to the fourth, or times x to the fourth rather equals x to the seventh. And let's see why that works. Let's break it down. So if we have x to the third, that's multiplying x three times. Uh, x to the fourth is multiplying x four times. So we're just adding the number of times that we're multiplying together. So if we get um, third and fourth, then it's going to be the seventh. We're multiplying seven times. Okay, and then the next one is dividing. Um, so rather than adding, we're going to subtract here. So if we've got something like x to the fifth divided by x to the third, we're going to get x to the second. Five minus three is two. And for a visual for that, if you've got five um, x's being divided by three x's, we're subtracting because that's the number of x's that are going to cancel out. So if we look at that uh, fraction there, three of those are going to cancel out and we're going to be left with two. So that's why we're going to subtract to get the answer there. When we raise to a power on the next rule, um, we can end up multiplying. So x squared to the fourth is going to be two times four or x to the eighth. And visually what that we're doing there is we've got x squared and the number of times that we're multiplying it together is four. So we've got to do two times four to get the total number of times we're multiplying eight together. Okay, and in the next property, uh, we have two things inside a parentheses raised to a power. And all this is saying is when we have two things inside the parentheses, we've got to raise both to that power. So if we've got something like xy to the fourth, both the x and the y have to be taken to the fourth power. But where some people make mistakes is when you've got two x all to the third power, the two needs to be raised to the third power, as well as the x being raised to the third power. So this is going to simplify to eight x to the third. The next rule just tells us that anything to the zero power is one. So even if we've got something complicated like this, raised to the zero power, we still get one. So rather than just memorizing that anything to the zero power equals one, let's see why that would make sense. So here I've got powers of two. So if you go up from the power two to the one to two to the two second, we have to multiply by two. So each time we go up here, we've got to multiply by two. So going down from two to the fourth, down to two to the third, we're going to divide by 2. Same thing for the next one. Divide by 2 and get 4. Divide by 2 to get 2. So to go from 2 to the first to 2 to the second, we have to divide by 2, which gets us 1. So that's just a demonstration of how something to the 0 power um, needs to equal 1. The next rule addresses negative exponents. So if something's to a negative exponent, it's the same as 1 over that same thing to a positive exponent. So if you've got x to the negative 7th, that's the same as 1 over x to the positive 7th. 1 over x to the negative 5th is the same as x to the positive 5th. Where this really comes in handy in simplifying expressions is that we can use this to get rid of negative exponents. So x to the negative 5th, we can move from the numerator to the denominator and have it become positive 5. Same thing with the z. We can move the z from the denominator to the numerator, and it becomes, instead of negative 4, it becomes positive 4. So we can use this to, as a first step to get rid of all negative exponents and then work from there. And the last rule addresses what do we have, um, what do we do when we have x brought up to a fraction? So the numerator is going to be the power, and the denominator is going to be the root. So if we have something like x to the 1 half, it's the square root of x. x to the 1 third is the cube root of x. So the denominator becomes the root. 
But once we get a numerator instead of one, there's two different things that we can do. We can put the numerator inside as the power, so the fifth root of x to the fourth, or we can take the whole thing, the fifth root of x, and raise the whole thing to the fourth. And it's important to know both of these different ways because if we're evaluating and simplifying, sometimes it's easier to um, do the fourth inside, and sometimes it's easier to do it outside. Okay, let's take a look at six sample problems here. So the first one we're asked to um, simplify two things that we're multiplying together. Um, so we can put the x's together, we're multiplying, so we're gonna add exponents. So we get x to the fifth. And then um, the y's we put together, we're adding exponents there. A minus four and a six is gonna get us a positive two. Okay, in the next problem, we're asked to simplify. Uh, we're doing a division. Um, the y, there's the only, the only y is at the y to the third, so we don't have to do anything with that. Um, notice that the three is on the bottom. So one thing I want to show you is the final answer is going to have one third in it. If you want, you could put a one times up here, and it might make more sense to get you the one third. Uh, but the, the answer is going to have one third, not three. And then the x's, we've got x to the fifth and x squared. We're dividing them, so we subtract the exponents. Five minus two gets us three. And the y is unchanged because there's no other y's. So we get one third, x to the third, y to the third. Okay, in the next problem, we're taking um, things to a power, uh, but we also have to notice that there's two things. So in the first one, we've got two and x third that we're both taking to the second power. So we've got to take two to the second power and get four. x to the third to the second power. When we take to the power, we multiply exponents. So we're going to get x to the sixth. Same thing for this second piece. Three to the third power is going to get us 27. And then x to the second to the third, we multiply and get x to the sixth. Now we've got to multiply these two things together. So the 27 times the 4 is going to get us 108. And make sure we multiply. Remember the numbers we're just multiplying because we have multiplication here. We're adding the exponents when we multiply. So then um, to get x to the sixth times x to the sixth, we add the exponents and we get x to the twelfth. Okay, in this next problem, um, it says express the form in the form x to a power. So we just want to um, convert this into an exponential form. Um, so the denominator, when we take the fourth root of x to the fifth, the exponent that we're raising it to is the numerator, and the root is the denominator. So this is going to be 1 over x to the 5 fourths. Um, normally you would just leave it like that uh, without negative exponents, but we're being asked to put it into a single uh, x to a single um, value of exponent. So 1 over an exponent is the same as that exponent negative. So if we wanted to convert it to a number to an exponent, we'd get x to the negative 5 fourths. Okay, the next one we're doing division. Um, I'm asking to simplify and also eliminate negative exponents here. So I'm going to do this two different ways, right? So um, the first way we can go 16 divided by 4 gets us 4. Now let's take a look at the x's. We are subtracting, so we're going to get x to the 3 minus negative 6 because we're subtracting. And the y is going to be negative 5 minus 3. 
So let's simplify that. 3 minus a negative 6 is going to be 3 plus 6, or 9. And then the y to the negative 5 minus 3 is going to be negative 8. Then if we want to get rid of negative exponents, uh, we can do that by moving the y to the negative 8 into a denominator as y to the positive 8. Another way to do this is to take and get rid of the negative exponents right from the start. So we could just rewrite this, um, leaving positive exponents where they are, and then moving negative exponents. So the x to the sixth here would move up top as x to the positive six. y to the third is already positive on the bottom. But y to the negative fifth in the numerator, we can move down to the denominator and make it y to the positive fifth. And then we can divide 4 goes into 16 four times. We're multiplying here, so we add exponents and get x to the ninth. We're multiplying, so we add exponents on the denominator and get y to the eighth. So either way, we end up with the same answer. Um, but some pe people find it a lot easier to get rid of the negative exponents right from the start, start by moving them either up or down and making them positive. All right, in this last one, we're looking to simplify. Um, so 27 to the 2 thirds power um, and x to the third to the 2 thirds. We've got to take both things because they're both in the parentheses. So we have to take both to the 2 thirds power. So it's going to be 27 to the 2 thirds power and then x to the third to the 2 thirds power. Um, so let's rewrite this so we can simplify it. 27 to the 2 thirds is going to be the cube root of 27 and then square it. So you could put the square on inside or the outside. It's going to be easier to take the cube root of 27 first and then square it rather than squaring 27 and taking the cube root, uh, but you'll get the same answer. And then here, when we raise the power, we multiply. So this is going to be x to the 3 times 2 thirds, which x to the 3 times 2 thirds just simplifies to um, 2. The 3 is canceled and you're left with 2. On this side, the cube root of 27 is going to be 3. So that's going to be 3 squared. Or it's just going to be 9 x squared. Let's look at that another way. Um, so we could also have taken a look at this and we could have converted this 27 to 3 to the third power. So you could have looked at it like this as well. 3 to the third power times x to the third power all raised to the two-thirds power. And then when you multiply three um, to the two-thirds, you get three to the second. So it'd be three to the second. And same thing with x and get x to the second. So in the same way, we would get nine x squared. There's a couple different ways to look at it. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments on this video or suggestions for future videos, just comment below. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, you can do so right over here. And I've got another suggestion for you to watch right here. Thank you and come back again soon.